we go. All right, so um, we are now live in Zoom, live on Facebook and ready to roll. Um, so uh, let me first quickly introduce you guys or say welcome um, for if you guys who have not been to any of our webinars before, welcome if it's your first time. If you've been to some of our previous webinars and you're coming back, always great to see return students who love what we're putting out there. Uh, if you don't know who I am, my name is Craig Grant. Um, I'm an international speaker, instructor, and coach on just about everything real estate technology and marketing. Uh, and I'm also the CEO of RETI, which stands for the Real Estate Technology Institute. And we are the group that puts on not only these weekly, these weekly webinars that we're about to do, uh, but also run the reti.us website, uh, which is, if you're not familiar with it, it's an incredible site that I run along with a whole team of great speakers, including Brandon, who's joining us today, um, that has, and we'll show you a little glimpse of it at the end. It has over 2,500 instructional videos, webinars like we're doing now, product reviews, and a whole lot more on the site. Uh, and again, if you stick around towards the end, we'll give you a little preview of it, plus some other perks for attending today's webinar. Uh, but let me first, before I do that, let's also kind of introduce and bring in Brandon, because Brandon has been a um, part of the RETI team now for a while. Um, and I've said it before, Brandon might be, and I say this with the utmost respect, probably the techiest of any realtor I know in the industry, um, especially when it comes to things like um, marketing and data metrics marketing and also smart home technology. So Brandon, why don't you kind of say hello to the group and kind of maybe give a little bit of your background as well. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Uh, so my name is Brandon Doyle. I'm a practicing real estate agent in Maple Grove, Minnesota. I've been a national speaker for a few years now, written a couple of books. They're bestsellers on Amazon, about mostly about marketing, mm -hmm. uh, real estate business planning. But for the last two years or so, I've been doing a deep dive into smart home technology. So I write for Realtor Magazine, uh, Inman News, I have a weekly column there, and then RETI as well. Uh, yep. So do, I do a ton. We've got a smart home channel. We've tested over 100 different products. Uh, we do product reviews, comparisons, installations, things like that. And uh, actually, next week, I'll be on uh, Carol Evan News here in Minnesota. Nice. Again, talking about uh, smart home technology, a different uh, a holiday guide for what to shop for this coming year. So if you guys have any questions on that, I'll give you some tips here at the end yep. uh, where you might want to look for Black Friday week sales. <laughs> yeah, it's no longer a day. It's like uh, it's not, not become a, like not a month anymore. But... <laughs> yeah. It's weeks yeah. and months, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, and by the way, Brandon mentioned his um, YouTube channel. And Brandon, why don't you, um, you know, it might take you a second to do this, but throw the link into the chat room for the group um, for your Smart Home Division's uh, YouTube page, or channel, sorry, because, um, and I'm not saying this because Brandon's a good friend and a contributor on RTI, but his Smart um, Home Decisions channel on YouTube is incredible. I mean, they really, when he says they've, reviewed over a hundred different smart home products. He's not joking. And these aren't just, this is a cool product. This one's not, I mean, they really get into, you know, if it's a vacuum, just how well it vacuums and the different features and tools it has compared to the other smart vacuums on the market. It's really is an incredible channel. Um, and we are working right now to get a lot of that content that brand is creating onto the RTI site to really kind of build out our smart home section to make it, you know, one of the best, it, it'll be the best in the industry without a doubt, because nobody really is covering smart home technology the way Brandon is. Um, and I've been teaching about smart home technology for a long time as well. Um, and when I, and if, by the way, if you're not aware of this, this is our fourth installment of the webinar series that Brandon and I have been doing together on smart home technology. So if you're not a member of the site, um, you, you know, you'd have to become a member to go back and watch the other three, uh, because the way we do our weekly webinars every week, is every Wednesday at three o'clock Eastern, we do these webinars. If not able to catch it on Wednesday at three, let's say you have a meeting or whatever it might be, or you have an appointment with a customer, uh, you have a week to go watch the webinars. Uh, and then after a week, uh, they become member only. And the way that you can watch it is if you go to the reti.us website, click on the webinars button in the, in the header of the site, um, right below the slideshow, which is like, here's the next several webinars, you'll see that the, it'll show you, here's all the previous webinars we've done in date order. So the first webinar on that list would have been the one we did last week. 
and then you can go to the second one unless it be two weeks ago. So if you don't catch the webinars Wednesday at three Eastern, you have a week to watch it as a non-member. If you are a member of the site, you can watch anything on the site anytime you want at your own leisure, right? Uh, but as a non-member, you have a week to watch them. But the other three webinars that Brent and I did, in the first one, we kind of did an intro to smart home technology, like what smart home is, how smart home devices work, you know, just kind of overall, just smart home technology and the history of it and why smart home technology becomes such a big thing and why it's become such an easy thing. Like what I always talk about is um, a few years ago, it was really just for the super rich. You had to bring in special high tech companies to come in and set up your smart home technology. They charge you a ridiculous amount of money to build your own custom system. And now it's become honestly where you could spend a couple hundred dollars and qualify as a smart home because it only takes three devices in the household to qualify. Um, and they have to be three devices in different categories, but it's not hard to qualify as a smart home now. And it's nowhere near as expensive or geeky. And by the way, Brandon just put the link into the chat room and I'll throw it into Facebook as well um, for his YouTube channel, which is smart home decisions. So I'm going to throw that in Facebook as well for you guys. Um, so, the first one we did again was all about smart home, you know, what it is, kind of the intro to smart home. The second one we did was kind of as a realtor, what you need to know to work with smart homes, whether you're trying to help a buyer purchase a smart home, um, or maybe you're working with a seller trying to market and sell that property. So the second one we did was kind of from the realtor side of things, how do you really do smart home technology? And then the third one we did, which was last month, is we did one on uh, kind of like the smart home buying. And that was like, Brandon was absolutely the star of the show of that one. I kind of sit back and kind of listen to him most of that one because of how much knowledge he has in smart home products. But it was, what do you buy? Like, which lights do you buy? And what are the options in lightings? And, you know, what are the different options in the bedrooms and in the kitchens? So the third one we did was, again, about smart home buying. And today, the fourth and last installment of the series is now we're going to get into kind of the bad part of smart home technology, which is what are the security risks and concerns you have with smart home devices? So kind of like the way I said, I kind of kicked back and listened to Brandon mostly last month. He's going to do a little bit of that on this one <laughs> and kind of let me take the show, although I'm sure he will contribute some because, again, he's so much more hands on with this technology on a daily basis than I am. Uh, but as many of you guys probably know, one of my major topics I speak about in the industry is cybersecurity. Uh, and technology and security go hand in hand these days, where if you have any kind of smart device or any kind of device, really, it is a target for hackers and for potential risks. Um, so what we're going to do in this one is we're going to talk about not just the cybersecurity risk, but also the legal risks you got to worry about. There's privacy aspects that come with smart home technology. Um, there's the, you know, are you protecting data and transferring data to the next client properly? Things like that. So there are some concerns with smart homes, but if you've ever been to any of our webinars before, I've been to my classes at events, you'll know that anytime we teach this stuff, it's here's the problem, but here's the solution. So we're not just going to send you out into the wild and say, you know, there's, you're on your own now figure this out. Here's the risks. We're going to teach you how to address these risks at the same time, but you need to know about them, whether you're having smart home technology in your own household, or if you're working with your clients, advising them to purchase and get smart home devices in the house or in the property probably is a better way to put it. Um, so let's first look at what are some major concerns you should have when it comes to smart devices. So the first major concern is that many smart home devices and especially the cheaper ones come with just default passwords. And a lot of times you don't have the ability to change those passwords and logins, or they make it really hard to figure out how do you go in and do that. And because of this, that becomes a risk right away. Because if something has a default password as a hacker, it means they can hack into every device of that company's product, okay? Just by guessing the one default password. So a lot of times smart devices, especially lower end cheaper ones, don't give you the ability to change these logins and passwords. That right there is a concern, okay? Number two is the lack of ability to update or install security patches. So some of these, and again, I hate to say it, but the lower end versus the higher end ones, um, or kind of the bigger name brands versus the smaller name brands, a lot of times these cheaper low end brands don't give you the ability to install updates. And the same way you're supposed to install an update on your computer when Windows wants to update or Adobe Flash wants to update, well, these devices should 
update all the time as well. And some of them don't update, or again, they make it very hard to do an update or they put it on you. You got to go to the vendor's website and see if there's an update and do it manually. So updating for security risks and patches is a second big concern. A third major concern is that smart devices always work off of some kind of a network connection. Whether it's Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, they're typically going through your network. And if you don't think, first of all, your home network is the most secure thing on earth, well, the same way they can hack your computer network to get to other things inside your household, well, if it's going through an unprotected network, it means they can also do things to your smart devices, such as turn off your alarm system, unlock your doors, turn off your cameras, whatever they want to do or turn on your cameras if they want to look at things. So the fact that a lot of these devices work through a network and those networks aren't always really protected is a third major concern. And again, we're just going through the risks right now. Of course, we're going to help you solve each of these in a few moments. The fourth major concern is that these devices, unless they are properly wiped or reset, retain data information in them. So as a realtor, you definitely need to know this one because let's say you are representing a property that has smart home technology in it, and then you sell that property to a new buyer. Well, if that new buyer gets access to those smart devices, the information was not wiped or reset in them, that means the buyer now takes possession of that information. They can steal that data and use it however they want. It also means if the seller is in any way either disgruntled or unhappy, they can log in and do bad things. So devices should always be wiped or reset before they transfer ownership. And of course, we're gonna teach you how to do that, okay? And then number five, by default, a lot of these devices are always listening and recording. Um, so, and I'm sure you guys know all the facts. I mean, your phone is listening and recording you 24 hours a day as well, right? How many times have you talked about something and two seconds later, all of a sudden you see an ad for it on the internet for exactly what you just talked about. So that kind of stuff is happening on all of our devices, but with smart devices, it adds an extra concern in there, especially in the real estate world because of privacy, right? You need to, and I'm going to talk about this. You need to tell a potential buyer if there are recording devices in that property, or they could say you kind of violated my privacy rights. Okay. So those are kind of our big picture major concerns. So you're probably thinking, so what? What are the odds that any of these things will ever impact me either in my personal life or in my real estate business, right? Well, first of all, when you look at things like that disgruntled seller, um, let's say, or a disgruntled ex, so you have a divorce between two parties, right? And one of them is disgruntled. Well, if you do not, again, wipe them, wipe the device or change the login credentials, that person could log in remotely and they could mess with your thermostat. They could turn on and off your lights remotely. They could unlock your doors and security system. They can do whatever they want. Okay. So you got that situation. Or I could be your neighbor, your friendly neighborhood burglar. And same thing, if you have, let's say, a default password, haven't changed things, or just a weak password on your network, I could, again, unlock your doors, I could turn off your alarm system, I could turn off your cameras, I could do whatever I want remotely if you have weak security in these devices in your household. Um, and then a other concern, and this is a realistic one, you may not think it is, um, is when you talk about what hackers do, um, there is what's called a DDoS attack, which stands for Dedicated Denial of Service. And you probably have heard of this in movies and TV shows, especially when they deal with spies and kind of hackers in those shows and movies, where hackers will just try to take a website off the internet. They'll just send so much traffic to it at one time that it crashes the website or the server. That's called a DDoS attack. Uh, and what you need to realize is that because these devices are connected to a network, they can do that to take down your system or they can use it to take down other external websites. Uh, in fact, you may not be aware of this, but back in 2016, the biggest DDoS attack of all time was called Mirai. And what basically hackers did was they wanted to prove just how weak security is in smart connected devices. So what they did was they basically pinged every smart device that still had a default password 
and hacked and took over control of those devices. And they used it to send traffic to one of the major internet providers. And they able to take down the entire internet provider's network for almost an entire day. So you're talking about major websites like Twitter, Netflix, Amazon, Reddit, were offline for almost 24 hours because of one of these uh, DDoS attacks on smart connected devices. Again, if it's a device that doesn't have proper security, it's easy to hack and take over to whatever they want to do, whether it's going after someone else's website or taking over your property. All right, so that's kind of our landscape of the concerns of the risks that are out there with smart devices. So now let's kind of take a look at what we can do to solve each of these big risks, right? Problem, solution. So as we talked about, the first major concern is the fact that a lot of these devices come with default passwords or they make it very hard for you to change the password to make it stronger, okay? So as I mentioned earlier, I, you really got to stay away from some of these little rinky-dink companies you've never heard of before that are building smart home technology. It really does make sense to invest and buy products that either are coming directly from the major vendors like Google, Amazon, or Apple, or are at least endorsed by them. Because the better vendors, the bigger companies are investing heavily into security and also into the ability to change and update things like password and admin logins. So when you buy a product from Amazon or Google or Apple, typically it's not coming with a default password. You're able to quickly go in during the setup and change that password either using a QR code or setting up two-factor authentication. You have to text the code to prove it's really you, but they're doing more to make sure that device is set up properly with security than a default. So again, you gotta be careful buying these low-end products that you might not have these capabilities. Yeah, another easy thing to do is yep. with like your internet service provider, there's like a default password on the bottom of the modem or on the yep. back of it. And some people don't even change that. So it's like anyone that has access to that could take a picture and then now they have access to your network anytime they want. Absolutely. If you have your own router, if you know the IP address, it's pretty easy. Default password is usually admin. Uh, yep. So, you know, changing those two things and then making, uh, having multiple networks. You have a guest network that you can give out to people, you know, and allow them access to your home network without accessing other devices or having, you know, total control over everything. It's a really uh, big step to do. Absolutely. They're not and making I your password the same. You shouldn't yep. have the same password for your bank account as your email, as your Facebook, as all your smart home, as your as your home network. You know, that's absolutely get into one of them, you know, they break into the weakest one and now all of a sudden they have all of yours. And this actually happened to me. I had a, like a, a generic password I was using for a, a product I was testing. And uh, sure enough, they got breached and some hacker emailed me and told me he had this footage of me, which obviously doesn't. Uh, and <laughs> in the email, he included the password that I had used. And I right away knew what product it was because I used yep. different passwords for every device. And I was like, huh, that's funny. And I knew that that company did have a breach. So had I had my you know bank statements or my bank account had the same password, I would have been really screwed because it would be very easy for them to figure that out. I mean, he knew my email address or that person. I shouldn't assume that it's a, a guy, but the person knew my email address. So that was also my Facebook login. So if my password was the same, they would have gained access that way. Yep. Uh, so fortunately for me, I have all different passwords for every site. Oh, you just went on mute for some reason. Yep. Yeah, and by the way, the advice Brandon has given right there, um, whether you do smart home technology or not, it does not matter. Your router, your modem and your router for your internet in your property should always have changed passwords and logins. It should not be the default one that your provider gave you when you signed up for their service uh, because all the things we're talking about, how a hacker can take over your network as a weak passwords, it could be for non-smart home devices as well. If, they can, if, you, if your modem and router has a default password on it or a very weak uh, password, they can log on to your network and they can install a virus. They could take over non-smart connected devices. They could do different things. So the advice that we're giving you right here, if you've ever attended any of our my classes on cybersecurity or other webinars or videos we do on RETI, this applies to everything. You should always have different logins and passwords to everything. It doesn't matter what it is, whether it's your modem and router, whether it's different accounts that you use, that advice brands giving applies to everything in your tech life. Okay. 
Do you have anything else? Because you, you kind of went on mute there just the very, very end. So I received a phone call, so it oh, apparently gotcha. muted me. But no, I, that was all. <laughs> yep. And actually, it's probably good that you're piping in right now because this is one that you pointed out to me that I didn't even know that you mentioned this one during one of our calls. Uh, do you want to kind of jump, right handle this one? Yeah, definitely. So just the same way that you would change out you know, your locks on a house, a traditional lock when you buy a house, you know, because somebody could have made copies of that key. The same holds true for a smart lock. Uh, a lot of them have a default code that's right on the back. And in some of them, you can actually pick up where the battery goes. You know, so you know, walk into your house, you turn around and just look at the where the door locks there. If the battery compartment isn't fastened with some sort of screw, uh, you can actually pull that up and on the back of that, it's going to show a code. That code is the master code to reset and make your own key codes. Uh, you get like fun party trick, you know, pick up that lock and, and change the person's code. And now yep. you have access to it. And so the previous owner, if they cut the box for the lock they, or they wrote this down, they're going to have that code, whatever it may be. And they can use that in the future to, uh, you know, make their own codes. And it, would be very difficult for you to trace that. So uh, I actually just recommend replacing the lock completely uh, if it's something that you're concerned about or purchase a lock uh, that isn't or that doesn't have that feature. Yep, so. exactly. Yeah, and yep. I knew about the fact that the fact sure. that you want to always want to wipe the lock's password, but I didn't know the part about the back of the battery. That that one you mentioned on the last call, I was like, ooh, really? And I like, I literally, I, after that call, I went like, what? Our front door, the when we purchased our house back in May, didn't have a smart lock on it. We put our own smart lock on the front door, but there is one to our master bedroom. So I went and I took off that and I was like, you're darn right. There it is, right behind the battery. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Like, so yeah, again, you got to wipe this. It's not as easy. <laughs> What's that? If, so like, if you're the one that purchased the lock originally, you just have a screw so no one else can open it and look at it. Yep. Uh, that that makes it more secure because now only you. I mean, I mean, most people aren't don't know that that actually exists and aren't going to be doing that. Uh, also, you probably should only allow people in your house that you trust. <laughs> so, that too. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I mean, when you sell the house, I think it's a good point to know that, like, in theory, if that person was a bad person, yeah, they would mm -hmm. still have access. And you should be changing your lock anyways because it's just a good thing to do. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Okay. Yep. All right. Moving on. Um, and by the way, this is just another to look for when you're buying smart devices these days, but you're starting to see more and more smart devices include forms of biometrics, fingerprints, facial recognition, stuff like that. Um, or if, even if it's doing some form of two factor where it has to text you a code, anytime there's an additional layer of security, that's smart to look for in a device. So especially a lot of things like smart security systems and door locks, the locks are incorporate this. A lot of them are also incorporating like Bluetooth with your own device, like with your own phone. So for example, when you get very close to your front door, you wouldn't have to unlock it because only your phone has that, you know, personalized code to unlock it that's built into the app. So again, any form of two factor, whether it's a biometric or a code or something like that, adds an extra layer of security you could do. And again, the better devices are doing this, the lower end ones definitely are not. All right, second issue we went over that we got to teach you how to fix is a lot of these devices do not give you the ability to update or install security patches. So not to beat a dead horse, but again, it goes back to reputable brands buying from the big ones, not from some little off the shelf one you've never heard of before. But even when you're buying from reputable brands, you still got to be careful. Uh, in fact, this was a pretty crazy study that came out a couple months ago. And what they found was um, a lot of the smart appliance manufacturers. And when you talk about smart appliances, something like a smart refrigerator could be two times the cost of a regular non-connected refrigerator, right? Uh, so let's say a normal refrigerator might have cost you $2,500. Now you're forking out four to 5000 for a smart refrigerator. Uh, and what, what this research found was that a lot of the major manufacturers creating these smart appliances are not in their small print, if you read into their terms of service, are not guaranteeing any patches or updates more than just a couple of years. So just think, you spend $5,000 on a smart refrigerator 
And two or three years later, it's offline, not getting updates, right? And not only would it not get updates, meaning it might not even be connected to the internet anymore, but also it could be a security risk in your household that you're kind of just paid all this extra money for. So when you're buying smart devices, stuff like appliances, you definitely might want to look even further into what are their terms of service when it comes to things like security updates and patches. Just because it's from a big name doesn't guarantee they're going to do that with something like a smart appliance. And somebody else pointed out to me the other day, this is also becoming a concern with things like smart TVs uh, because a lot of smart TV manufacturers are not guaranteeing updates long-term either. So that, I mean, that's true with all these products now that uh, you, know, you buy a product because it has certain features, but the problem is that as other devices and services get upgraded, uh, then that device no longer works. A really good example is like Netflix. You know, yep. people had bought these smart TVs using them for Netflix and then Netflix, you know, got better, but the TV no longer, you know, can support that. And the manufacturer is no longer providing updates to like, uh, to go with that. And so now you have a smart TV that doesn't do what it originally advertised. So yep. you, know, you can't access Netflix on there without like adding an additional device. Uh, so that's very frustrating. And then, like you said, with like the refrigerators and the, these appliances is that, yeah, they, they stop updating, uh, but yeah, eventually they're not going to, they're not going to work the same. And yep. then you've got a lot of the manufacturers are building this in and it's not necessarily for you. It's for them. They want to like uh, track all these devices and track everyone's usage. Uh, yep. That way they can you know, like, tweak their product and then also know exactly when your stuff is about to break so they can start advertising to you and say oh, absolutely buy a new washer because we know this one's broken yep. <laughs> <laughs> or you need that you need that uh you know th that new sensor to make sure that your your water's clean like they they know they track everything that, without a doubt but these are things again even with big brands you still got to look at their terms of service to make sure you're not going to get screwed some brands are better than others when it comes to this. That's the key. So read the small print, whether it's a TV, whether it's a refrigerator, whatever, to make sure you're not sitting with a brick a couple of years later that's not updating. Okay. Uh, and by the way, you've got to remember. Too. Oh, what's that? Oh, there's a lot of devices too, where it's just like, it doesn't make sense to have it connected to the internet. Yeah. It's like, what is the benefit for you? Uh, it's like uh, washer and dryers come to mind, where it's like, well, you get a notification. Well, it does buzz. And yeah. We're like, you can start it remotely. I'm like, but I still have to physically put the laundry into the washer. So until a robot can do that for me, what, what is it? Why, why do I care? So I agree. And, and the same thing with a refrigerator. Yes, it's cool. Your refrigerator can order you milk when you're low on milk. Okay. That, but do I really need a computer screen on the front of my refrigerator to check my email and check the internet? No. You know what I mean, I got a device in my pocket that can do that. So, I mean, when you're buying smart devices, and we talked about this in the last month's webinar, the buying uh, one in our series, you, you do got to sometimes think, what is the true functionality? And is it going to really make my life better having a connected refrigerator or smart toilet seat or whatever, toilet or whatever it might be, right? Some things are just kind of wow factors and some are like, this is going to make my life better. So it always comes down to that. But when it comes to the security part, again, read the terms of service, maybe contact that vendor through their website or whatever, their chat and say, hey, how long is this product supported before you go and buy? Because you don't want to have a brick in a short period of time. I always suggest buying uh, devices that are locally controlled. Uh, okay. So if you're reliant on the cloud for your device to work, you know, a lot of yep. the cheaper smart switches, they actually ping a server. Some of them are located in China. Other companies are smart enough to at least uh, rent <laughs> server space from Amazon. But nonetheless, like the device isn't functioning without the internet connection. It kind right. of has to ping their server. And the reason they do that is because cloud computing is much cheaper than uh, building a product that's you know got the capabilities to make like process things internally. Uh, so right. you know what you pay for <laughs> with these things, especially like switches is, is one and robot vacuums is another one. It's yep. like, why is my vacuum communicating with China? That doesn't make sense. <laughs> Yep, that's very, very special when you map out your property now, trying to yeah. split your household. Yay! Uh, <laughs> I might be in that boat, actually. Yeah, I know <laughs> you tested. are. Because how many, how many of those devices have you tested? Uh, we right. tested eight different robot vacuums, and three of them mapped out our house. One of them definitely sent that map to China. So, <laughs> yeah. oh well. <laughs>
<laughs> like I can see like exactly when it happened too. Like it recorded it, and then yep. we track all of our what our devices are doing, and I can see the exact moment it hanged the server in China and definitely uploaded that map. Yeah. And for what reason exactly? Yeah, mm-hmm. hard to say. <laughs> so, all right. Slightly. Problem number three is, and we kind of talked about this one already, but the fact that a lot of these devices are connected to the internet. Um, whether they're using your network to do things or sometimes they're pinging out to China, whatever it might be. Um, so, and Brandon tackled this one already. We'll just kind of recap it, but your network should have a strong password, not the default one. It is smart to also set up a firewall on your network that would try to block incoming traffic and any router or modem you buy typically has the ability to set up a firewall. Most people don't do it, but you should. Uh, and, and this is true with any kind of account you have always take advantage of two-factor authentication when it's available in that product or service. And again, if you don't know what two-factor is, that could be a a biometric, a fingerprint scan or a facial recognition, or we're gonna text you a one-time code or using something like Google Authenticator where every couple seconds it gives you a new code that updates all nonstop, okay? But most good devices now are factoring in these kinds of tools. So if you do set up all of these, that way your network is better protected. I really right. recommend the Eero Pro, which was beyond sale this week. It's from um, Amazon. E-R-O Pro. It's a mesh network. It's the best. That's what I recommend. And it's affordable. It'll be like $240 or something starting e- Friday. E-R-O, right? E-E-R-O. Two E. Sorry about that. All right. Yeah. And it's that new version now. So it's got Wi Fi 6, uh, which is the best. All right. That is in both chats. There we go. All right. Moving on. The next big issue we have is the fact that these devices are not only recording information, but again, that information can be passed along to the next owner um, if information is not wiped or reset. Or the owner could, the previous owner could log in and do nefarious things such as unlocking the doors or messing with your foot thermostat or situations like that. So first of all, this goes back to you as a realtor. If you're a realtor watching this webinar um, is when you're working with a customer, you should ad- discuss with them and address with them before it even goes on the market, what devices are going to be included or convey in the sale of the property. And then any device that is going to convey such as something attached to the property you want to make sure that they understand, well, then you need, you need to make sure you wipe this device and set it back to factory before it sells. And that way the next property owner doesn't have access. Okay. And on the seller side, they should be asking or demanding the same things is I want to make sure that you are wiping this device and providing me a fresh ability to do a fresh login uh, because you don't want, again, that previous property owner to have access into the device or into those accounts. So all this should be done before it. You also can um, delete um, out any additional login, such as a guest login that might've been created. Uh, You can submit the change of ownership to the manufacturer of that product. Uh, So that way, let's say it's a Nest thermostat, Google who owns Nest knows there's a new owner and would kind of reset that account. Um, You can review your configuration settings and you can set everything back to factory. That's a big thing is just saying, this is a brand new device. I'm giving it to somebody else. Uh, Brandon, you want to add anything else there? Yeah, the seller should do that while they still have internet access. Uh, So just the other day, I had tested out a lock here at our house. Uh, We did an installation video, and then I gave it to my buddy to use at his house. Well, he went to install it, and he wasn't able to, and he wasn't able to reset it on his end uh, because he he wasn't the original owner. So uh, we had to... There's two options is uh, the first was that I could put it back in my house and then through my network, connect to it uh, and then factory reset it and hand it back to him. The other option was to go through the manufacturer and confirm the change of ownership, which is what we did because it was faster. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, here I, a guy that tests his products all the time and I was handed something off uh, thinking he'd be able to just use it and failed to realize that, Oh yeah, we got to, remove myself from the account and add it at him. And then I had another time where I gave something away and I was able to still log into it. And I was like, oh, whoops, I have to reset that. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, these are all just things transferred amongst friends, but like if I was you know, selling a property 
the person buying our house certainly wouldn't want that. And you do need the internet in order to do these resets. <laughs> and the next person can't set up their stuff until they have internet connection. So you're kind of in this little conundrum there where you're going to have a period of time where you're not able to do anything because one owner has already canceled their internet and the new person doesn't have the new internet that's up yet. So, right. Right. Plus and by the way, you can at least control your thermostat in the meantime. Like they, they do yeah. work. Out. But, but so uh, could they, right? Like if they yeah, still have yeah. access. Uh, so, and I've heard horror stories from realtors around the country of like, you know, an ex-husband or a disgruntled seller who's logging in and messing with their temperature all day long. You know what I mean? Like all of a sudden you're freezing. You don't know why. And you look over because it's dropped 20 degrees. Um, and by the way, I just put this link in both chat rooms, but this is, um, there's a uh, organization called the um, Online Trust Alliance, the OTA, uh, and their website's internetsociety.org. And they created a smart home checklist, like a little kind of a printout you could have to kind of check off, are you doing everything in the cell of a property of a smart home? Are you wiping the devices? Are you contacting the manufacturers and things like that? So that's a great resource for you to help you address is this property being conveyed properly with these smart devices? All right, number five is the fact that these devices are always listening and recording. By default, they typically are set up for that. Um, and that can lead to some issues. First of all, as a realtor, if you're representing a property, like if you're working with the seller, you are required to disclose in the MLS, not in the public remarks, but in the private showing remarks, if there's anything recording inside of the property. And to clarify that, if you have security cameras on the outside, those are deemed secure. You don't have to disclose security cameras. But anything recording inside, both audio and video inside the property, would need to be disclosed in the MLS if you are have devices listening and recording. So talk to your customers, your, your seller, and say, is anything in here recording, such as a smart speaker? Do you have security cameras on the inside? What do you have that could be listening and recording? And then again, you are required to disclose that. And if you don't, if a buyer comes into the property and doesn't know they're being recorded, now you're violating their privacy rights. And that could be a legal issue for you and also could be an ethics violation for you. I just saw somebody raise their hand, um, but now it went away, it looks like. All right. So I get they should raise their hand temporarily. But if you have a question, just put it in the chat. Um, or if you raise your hand again, we can always give you the ability to speak. Uh, but I saw it go up just for a second and then it disappeared. Um, so the two major devices that most people use that are listening recording are the Amazon Echo lines and the Google Home lines. So let's quickly teach you how to disable the listening and recording in both of them. So with Amazon Echo devices, okay? So there's three steps you gotta do. Um, and then there, after that, you'll see on each screen, the same first three are the same on each screen for Amazon. But first you log into your Amazon account and go to your account. Then you choose your devices and content once you're logged in, and then you choose Alexa, okay? And then once you get into there, if you want to disable the always listening recording, you choose Alexa privacy, and then you select opt out, and then you save, okay? So that's how to turn off always listening recording in an Amazon device. Um, if you want to make it where your recordings are only being held for a certain period of time, because usually it keeps every recording forever in your account. Again, the same, the first three steps are exactly the same. And then you choose step four is you choose manager Alexa data. And then you set the recordings delete in blank months and you set how far back you want to go. So if you say three months, it'll just automatically delete anything that's more than three months old at all times for it. You don't have to go back in and worry about this all the time. You just say how long you want it to retain data with step number five. Uh, and then if you want to go in and delete prior recordings, like maybe you don't want it to delete after three months, but you want to go back and delete certain ones. And first three steps are the same. And then in step four is you review your voice history, you choose the time frames, and then you clear all the recordings from that time frames. Or you can go in individually and choose individual recordings to delete from here as well. Okay. So that's how to do it all on an Amazon device. If you're a Google person, it's easier. You only have to do one step, like one series. You just go to myactivity.google.com. Um, you choose the little three dot menu in the corner. Then you choose product and date range and you select delete. And it just wipes out everything older than that date range. You could also set up how far you wanna re keep recordings in the same screen as well. So with Google, it's all on one screen, it's a lot easier. 
With Amazon, you do have to do a couple separate steps if you want to do those things. All right, so are there some legit concerns with smart home technology? Of course there is, right? But hopefully, especially if you've attended all four webinars in our series, hopefully by now we've definitely painted the picture that the advantages way outweigh the risks. Yeah, there's risks, but they're easy solutions you can go home and implement. Um, but these things should not hold you back from putting smart home devices and technology in your own properties. And they should not help hold you back from representing and selling or buying smart home uh, properties as well. Because again, the benefits way out far the risks. All right. So let's kind of kick it over to the chats in both sites, both in Zoom and Facebook, see if there's any questions, anything we covered. Uh, and while we're doing that, while we're queuing up the Q&A, let me also quickly pull up the RETI site. Uh, because I always say, as long as you stick around to the end, we're going to throw in some benefits for you. Uh, so the first big benefit, if you've never seen RETI, here it is. Uh, this is the site that I run along with the help of Brandon and several other technology experts in the industry. Uh, first of all, every single Wednesday at three o'clock Eastern, again, we do these three webinars. Now, of course, next week we're taking off for Thanksgiving uh, and I need to load in a couple more webinars for the month of December. Uh, you know, so we usually have a schedule up for at least a month in advance of several more webinars you could attend. Also, by the way, every month we create what's called a social media posting calendar, just to kind of quickly show you it. Uh, and what it is, is if you need help with social media or blogging, we give you different ideas or topics to blog about every single day of the year. So every month we create these, those are always free to anyone who goes to the site, is the monthly posting calendar for social media and blogging. Uh, and then if you go through the site, there's over 2,500 instructional videos and webinars on all these different categories. Uh, and again, if you're a member of the site, you get access to all this stuff and you can go in and learn about anything you want on the site. Uh, if you're not a member, again, you just have a week to go watch the webinars. You can go to the webinar section. And like I mentioned, each webinar is made private after a week. So right now you'd be able to go watch last week's webinar. Tomorrow, once I add this webinar onto the site, that will become private member only as well. Uh, but you can go back and watch as much as you want on the site if you're a member. So our second perk for attending today's webinar is a promo code or two promo codes if you are interested in getting an account um, that would give you a nice discount. So let me put these into the site, into the chat really quickly. So there's the link to the site itself. There's the link to the sign up you're interested in. And there's the promo codes that would get you a nice discount if you were to go to the site and sign up for an account. Uh, so the first promo code, RETI, uh, new RETI MO, I'm sorry, would get your first month for only a dollar. Um, and then after that, the account would go up to um, $19.95 a month after that first month. Um, or if you end up doing the second promo code, um, which is N-E-T-I-Y-R, um, would get you a whole year. And actually, I still haven't changed the price. Uh, it's actually $60 right now instead of 75. So you'd get a nice discount if you were to go and do that. Oh, I'm seeing that it, sorry about that. That was only going towards panelists, not everybody. Um, so there's the promo code with the links and the promos. Not a problem, Carrie. Uh, and if you do decide to join the site, please let us know in the chat. We'd love to welcome you to the site, um, you know, and to our network. Um, there we go. Now it's in Facebook as well. And I just noticed, by the way, that it looks like all of my chats, you guys weren't seeing them. So let me add those in as well. So there's the link to that um, checklist that I gave earlier. And here is a link to Brandon's YouTube channel, Smart Home Decisions, which is again, a fabulous smart home channel. You're going to go always check those out there as well. So I just added those into the chat for you, the link to the, um, that checklist you could use when you're selling a smart home. And then also the link to Brandon's YouTube channel are now in the chat room in addition to the promo codes. So any questions um, about anything we covered? I know we went over a lot of stuff there.
Okay. Well, I'm not seeing any new questions. There's still some of you guys logged in. So if you guys just want to say hi, loved it, hated it, whatever, feel free to put that in the chat as well. Uh, but if I don't see any new questions over the next minute or so, I'm going to shut things down both here in Zoom and on Facebook. Uh, okay. So Laura asked, what can we expect in the future in terms of smarter tech? Laura, that's a great question. Um, I mean, I think honestly, every device now is being made connected. And that's really become the new term in the smart home world is connected devices, um, where your device can communicate with other things and uh, turn on and turn off remotely and all that stuff. Uh, uh, and it's already kind of going in that direction. But every inch in the household is having smart device options now. If you attended last week's last month's webinar, we really covered that. Um, and if you didn't catch that, again, if you're a member, you can go back and watch it. But every inch in the household and outside the household, I mean, the yards are getting it, stuff like that. Alora just followed up saying, I'm thinking seniors who choose aging in place. That's definitely a major trend. We cover that in the second webinar in the series, um, kind of the aging in place. If you don't know what aging in place is, it's a major movement where you can use smart home technology or connected devices to help someone stay in their property longer than they might've been able to without it. Whether they're a senior, whether they're handicapped or whatever, they can use smart home technology to remind them when to take medications, when to eat on schedules, to for security, for maintenance of the property, and a whole lot more. So that's definitely a major thing that's going to continue to grow over the next several years um, is the whole aging in place. But I think you're going to start seeing every device you can buy for in the household is going to continue to get more and more connected, even things we aren't even thinking of. All right, Karen asked, um, missed the first half. I'll watch recording. Thanks. Not a problem. Again, I'll put the link in the chat for you for that. Um, if you, all you got to do is go to the webinar section and I'll put that into the chat right now. Um, and then you'll see the first one in the list. It'll be there by tomorrow. Um, will be the recording of this webinar that you can watch on replay for up to a week. Okay. And again, if you're a member, you can watch them as long as you get want to do. All right, guys, any other thoughts, questions, anything like that? All right, Laura, did you have any other kind of follow-ups on that whole aging in place thing, or did I nail it for you? All right, she said, perfect. All right, guys. Well, um, unless I see any new questions, I see Brandon just kind of popped out. So not a big deal because I was about to shut everything down. So of course, I was just about to thank him for kind of his, all his insights, not just today, but for the last few webinars, because Again, he's done a whole series with me on this topic. He really is just a wealth of information on smart home tech. Um, and again, keep on the lookout for other webinars. We do at RETI, always attend those. Uh, and please just do us that favor and go check out the site if you're not a member already. So unless I see any new questions, I will assume everyone is good to go. I'm going to go and shut down the stream to Facebook um, and just kind of take us home. So thank you guys so much for attending. And I hope everyone has a absolutely fantastic day.